Amen. 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 We give God all the glory for every one of you. And um, what a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a special day. I remember, you know, one of the sisters uh, on Monday asked the question the other time, what will we do concerning Rosh Hashanah? Or like you rather say, the Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. And I said, well, when you look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, it says, this month shall be the beginning of months to you. And that was talking about the month Aviv. And that has to do with like 20th or thereabout of March to 20th of April or just thereabout. But then, you know, for Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year, is the civil calendar. So the sacred calendar is the one that is in March. That's why up till today, when you look at the months, they are referred to with still some testimony to the Lord left behind. In the sense that March being the first month, the second month then will be April's, third month will then be May, fourth will be June, the fifth will be July, sixth will be August, then the seventh will be sept, sept, September. For those of you that know about Septuagint, sept, sept. Then October is the eighth month as, you know, a testimony to the fact that that used to be the case. We're going according to what God has said. It was the Roman Empire that changed the reckoning of time and gave the beginning of year to their God, Janus. Other than that, the whole world was reckoning that way, where you had octagon, October, because he's talking about the eighth. And then you go to the ninth, where you're talking about, you know, Novembris, Novem Nova, Novembris. Then you go to Deca, Decem, Decimal, December, the 10th month. Having said that, why are we holding this special time of prayer at this time because we are about to enter since we are looking at the civil calendar as point of contact for some of you to be able to get back to the original that which had to do with the sacred calendar so 5781 in the sacred calendar was entered in march but in the civil calendar is being entered you know, tonight at 6 p.m. Israeli time for the Israelites, which is 3 p.m. GMT, which is the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Now, why am I doing this? Because I was told, you know, saying, okay, Lord, I did tell the people that I'll try so that we'll use it as a point of contact. What do you have to say? And it came clearly <sighs> to me between 3 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. yesterday, GMT, wow. that this was the season of, please, um, uh, technical team, just help us. Okay. Now, so this was the season of a reset. I heard that very clearly from the Lord. A reset of nations as and individuals. So when, when I heard that, I said, okay, Lord, then what would you have me do? He said, let there be a special time of the reset so you can actually use that time to begin to recover grounds that have been lost. And then I began to think of the Jubilee, Pentecost, all of that. Those of you that don't know that, you know, this year of Jubilee, for example, is spoken about in Leviticus 25, verses 8 to 10, you can read the whole chapter because the year of Jubilee is not just, you know, a little thing. It actually resets a lot of things. You know, you go back to your property, you go back to your house, you go back to your family, you go back to a lot of things. And that's the reason why I believe, you know, Sister Margaret even led us through uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 
and you know psalm 89 is one of the scriptures that are very important because if you really want to look at the fact that god is faithful then you need to see his faithfulness in that respect having said that when god told me that it was the time of a reset for nations because israel is being used as a pattern for nations that's why he called the nation of Israel my people when he was taking them out of Egypt as a nation. Then now he says, Africa, my people, in Isaiah 19, talking about the continent. So the pattern is the continent of Afri Africa for continents. But for nations is the nation of Israel. So it's important for us to understand because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness there of the world and they that dwell therein. For he found it upon the seas and established upon the waters. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall obtain favor from the Lord and bless him from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those that seek you, that seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates of time. Lift up your heads, O you gates of this new year, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory in us shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, the commander in chief of the armed forces of the universe. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, he is the King of glory. Now, having said that, it becomes important for us to now understand that when you're dealing with issues like this, you are dealing with a very, very serious gate. It has to do with the gate of a new year that God has given us the opportunity not only to enter, but to reset, because that's the most important thing for me. The fact that God says it's a time for reset is what really makes it so important for me. He's saying it's a time for reset. Now, it, since he has said it's a time for reset, it then means that each one of us needs to see it as something that God is giving us an opportunity to start all over again. And permit me to go into Leviticus chapter 25 from verse 8 to 10 from the Amplified Version so that then we can actually see the thing that we are doing today. And hopefully everybody can begin to see that because I see a new beginning for you as a person, a new beginning for your life, a new beginning for your ministry, a new beginning for your expressions, a new beginning for your ability to walk with God, a new beginning for your word intake, a new beginning for your prayer life, a new beginning for your uh, times of uh, refreshing coming from the presence of the Lord, a new beginning for your times of communion with the Lord and with other men or women around the world that God has, you know, a new beginning in every sense of the word. This is what is important. It is very important that every one of us understands that. And my prayer is that even for families, this will form the new beginning, new beginning for your marriage, new beginning for your relationship, new beginning in every sense of the word in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would end up with God helping you to understand what it is that he is saying at this particular point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and we will take a quick look at Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus 25, and we're reading from verse 8. And I hope you have that so that you know what it is that we're dealing with. So Leviticus 25, we're starting from verse 8. It says, And you shall number seven Sabbaths or weeks of, you know, for years. Weeks of years of years. <laughs> His mercy, great is his faith. Everyone, everyone, make sure you have, you know, um, muted your microphone. And technical team, if need be, mute everybody and let them not be able to unmute themselves unless they are co-hosts. So that that way we don't have this challenge. All right. Thank you very much because we cannot afford to have that happening over and over. 
and you shall number seven Sabbaths. You shall number seven Sabbaths or weeks of years for you. Now, the weeks of years, let me say here, everything moves in circles. Days in circles of weeks. Weeks within months. So, you know, every one of us, each day is a circle of hours, 24 hours. So you have 24 hours a day and every day is the same circle. It's like a repetition of circles. God works in circles. I need to start that and set that base clearly. Then secondly, when it comes to the days now, seven days make a week and nobody lives beyond one week. You can only live a number of weeks repeated, just like number of days within the week. And then now four weeks approximately from one month. And now you end up with months being repetition of weeks. And then every year is formed by 12 months. So then you have repetition of months. You know, you, for, for those that go by the sacred calendar, Aviv, then you go on to all the others until you get to the last month. Now, in the event that you're using the Gregorian calendar, you will go from January to December every year. There is no year that is a different arrangement of months. It's the same kind of arrangement of months. So it's important for us to ensure that we're doing things that way and we are ensuring that we're giving glory to God by the thoughts we think, the words we speak, the actions we take or contemplate as we go through these cycles. Now, now that you've heard about cycles of life, and I'm not gonna teach on passages of life, there is a whole teaching that I undertook on passages of life, talking about the night of conception, the day, day of birth, and all the other, the works, the whole works. But today, I just want you to understand that is these circles that are very important. So that when God gives you the opportunity to start afresh, you ensure that this new foundation is not wasted you make sure that you get the best out of this new foundation. So it's important for you to get that, that God has just given us a new beginning. This is a privilege for a new beginning. So you should see it from that perspective. So he said there, and you shall number seven Sabbaths or weeks of years for you. So you see, is circles of years for you. Seven times seven years. So the total time of seven weeks of years shall be 49 years. Then you shall sound abroad the loud trumpet on the 10th day of the seventh month, almost October, like some said, on the day of atonement, blow the trumpet in all your land. And you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all, all its inhabitants. So that's the one we were now talking about concerning the civil year. And it's supposed to be not only Rosh Hashanah, but is also, you know, Teruah, Teruah Hashanah. So you are actually talking about, you know, the year of blowing of trumpets. In fact, some people want to just call it Yom Teruah. That means is the day of trumpets. But there is another day of trumpets that I don't want to go into because I talk about, you know, the seven feasts of the Lord and all that. But this is what we're dealing with here. That is circles, circles, circles. And these circles are important. I shall hallow the 50th year. 50th year was the year of Jubilee. From the end of the 49th to the end of the 50th was the whole 50th year. Just like you have the 50th day, Pentecost, 50th day after, you know, the Passover. The 50th day was Pentecost, Penta. All right, having said that, so it's important for you to know that this is actually the year. Excuse me, sorry about that. I had a little challenge, you know, with something falling off. We give God glory for his mercy. Now... So when, when it comes to that, 
what we're talking about is that you have the year of Jubilee, the day of Jubilee, the year of new beginning, the days of new beginnings. Now, he says, it shall be a Jubilee for you. And your bell is supposed to be the ram's horn. Now, you know, your bell, Hakeram, is talking about the, you know, year of Jubilee being a time that God is showing himself mighty on behalf of his people. And, you know, you have blowing of trumpets for that year of Jubilee, and God is helping us with that. Now, when you blow the trumpet, what is it supposed to be? It says, blow the trumpet in all your land, and you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty. That's the first thing. I wish we had all the time on our hands to go step by step, but I will want to spend more time praying you into the reset that God talked about because it's the day God is pressing the reset button for us. And it is important for us then to make sure that we get it right. It is important. So that's why I want you to ensure that everything you're doing is such that you can give God glory and he receives the glory at the highest level and the reset is you know really bringing god to the place where he is center of your life he is center of everything that is happening and he is actually taking his rightful position in your life through your life in the name of the lord jesus so he says you proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants so today we declare that there is liberty released into your life, liberty for your spirit, liberty for your heart, liberty for your mind, liberty for your emotions, liberty for your will, liberty for your intellect, liberty for your conscience, liberty for your disposition, liberty for your worldview, liberty for your mentality, your mindset, liberty for your perception, liberty for your relational skills, your understanding, everything that has to do with your soul, liberty for your body. That even things like some of us that have had have things that even, you know, took over our bodies, whether they be physical sicknesses or, you know, thorns in the flesh or works of the flesh that seem to actually, you know, cause us to go back each time. You have gained so much in terms of, you know, uh, uh, grounds spiritually. Then there is this so-called weakness that has to do with your flesh that now ends up setting you back. Today, you receive a reset. Let there be a divine reset right now. Let there be, you know, that uh, a heavenly reset. Let the reset button be pressed now in your life so that there is a reset. It's like a factory reset where everything is going back to the original. It's only that there will be a reload of the software that God has developed over the years in your life through the development of the fruit of your spirit as a result of the indwelling presence of the spirit of god in you let that begin to happen from today in the name of the lord jesus christ let god himself arise in your life let his enemies be scattered let god himself arise in your life and let his foes flee before him as smoke that is driven before the wind i declare them blown away as wax that melts before the fire so let the wicked perish in the presence of the lord right now in the name of the lord jesus christ I declare also from today that you will end up with that reset button being pressed not only in your physical life in terms of your flesh, in your body, in your the works of your hands, in your physical relationships, your social, political, economic, you know, expressions, that is social expression, economic expressions, political expression, you know, things that have to do with resources in the physical, resources in the realm of the spirit, resources socially, resources politically, resources economically, I declare a reset. Lord, because we're using the nation of Israel, which is like a physical marker for the history of nations, 
let each nation receive a reset right now especially those nations that are represented on this platform right now and any nation that is not represented necessarily by a national but you know there is somebody standing for or needs a prayer like this right now we declare this prayer credited to their account and we say to the nation of israel this is your reset the things that hitherto had been contrary to god in you are going to be reset let there be a restoration of the original pattern original purpose the original design original desire original dream of god for you in the name of the lord jesus christ he said, I shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants that was for sin, and it shall be a jubilee for you. For those of you that are just joining us, we'll be in Leviticus chapter 25 from verse 8. We're now in 10. And he says, it shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his ancestral possession, which through poverty he was compelled to sell. That means whatever you might have lost. This is the time of a reset. It is actually like you're being given a clean slate. You're being given a fresh page to rewrite the history, the story of God for your life, according to his original plan and purpose for you. Let that be the release of that now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we decree that established right now. And if I were you, I want to declare, this is my moment of reset. This is the time that my heart, my mind, my emotions, my will, my intellect, my consciences, my conscience, my disposition, my worldview, my mentality or mindset, perception, understanding, relational skills are all being reset right now. Relationships are being reset right now. My education is being reset now. For everything that has to do with my relationship in terms of my home, you know, my marriage, you know, things that have to do with the aspects that, you know, deal with, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, sometimes it appears that we're dealing with issues that have to do with people that end up saying, okay, look, I am not having any challenges in my marriage, but somehow I'm having challenges with my children or my parents. This is the time of reset. As we are praying right now concerning the Jubilee, concerning this reset button that God himself has pressed, let there be a reset for you. Let there be a reset for your father. Let there be a reset for your children. Let there be a reset for your mother. Let there be a reset for your grandchildren. Let there be a reset for your grandparents. Let there be a reset for your spouse right now. We declare a reset button that has been pressed now activated on your behalf. We declare that we even now backdate it to March, you know, middle of March, when we had the beginning of the sacred calendar in the name of the Lord Jesus. But since God said to me yesterday at, you know, between 3 uh, and 3.30 p.m. GMT, that, you know, today was to be the day that we'll use Israel as a point of contact for resetting in terms of button, reset button for nations. Let each nation that is represented now receive that reset button according to God's original plan and purpose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because we know you have heard, you are hearing, we'll continue to hear and bring glory to your own name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and give you glory. So like we're saying, it is a reset button where there is liberty proclaimed throughout the entire earth to all the inhabitants of the land. Liberty, we declare liberty right now. There are some of you that have had almost like a limit placed over you. You are not able to go beyond a certain level. Today, we declare that limit taken off. We take off those limits because the reset would ensure that this time you're able to break through the defenses of the enemy. You're able to break through the ceilings that might have been placed on you. For those of you that, you know, are trying to get people to join, let them know that it is the prayer platform that, you know, we're using. The prayer platform, the one that was sent for prayer. Those who are key leaders, just remind them that it was sent on the key leaders platform so that they can join on Zoom directly. But let me move on quickly so that we can try and finish. We're still in Leviticus chapter 25, and now we're in verse 11. Because I, I, I would have gone, you know, through the whole of verse 10, 
But maybe let me just say, and each of you shall return to his ancestral possession, which through poverty he was compelled to sell. From today, every circumstance, every inharmonious circumstance, let there be a divine adjustment right now as part of the reset. Every inharmonious circumstance under the sun, I declare it now readjusted to fitting with God's original purpose, God's original design and desire in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then he also said, and each of you shall return to his family from whom he was separated in bond service. So whatever might have separated you from your family, whatever might have separated you from your spiritual family, your physical family, your economic family, your political family, your social family, it is deeper than you think because there are some of you, you actually realize that there are certain economic families you're supposed to have belonged to. There is a class you're supposed to be operating and I'm not talking about classism, no, no, no. I'm talking about the realm of operation that God ordained for you to, So you can become a blessing to the entire earth and the universe as a whole. That which had been denied you access from today, I declare you enter by the power that's invested in the name and the blood of Jesus. Arise, O oh God, and defend your cause. Arise and defend your stake. Arise and defend your portion. Arise and defend your inheritance in and through these ones. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare from today that you are ushered into your place in God, in life, in this season, in this generation, and in history, according to God's original plan and purpose. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise and give you glory, Lord. We declare that according to verse 11, that 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. In it you shall not sow or reap or store what grow, uh, and store what grows of itself or gather the grapes of the uncultivated vines. For it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat the sufficient increase of it out of the field. Freshness, freshness, freshness. You know, from now on, you're going to enjoy freshness. There will be fresh manna on a daily basis. Fresh manna on a daily basis. That's part of the reset, you know, uh, 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 benefits. So, because when I heard God clearly yesterday, there was a reset button for nations and for individuals. I was like, Lord, I thank you because you're giving us the opportunity. So today, as we are praying, especially since we're using Israel as a point of contact and it's four minutes to their own 6 p.m., which is the beginning of a new day, for those of you that know, and today they are blowing trumpets all over the place, then you need to make sure that right now you proclaim whatever needs to be proclaimed. Some of you get ready with your shofars, the rams, horns, or the horn of the kudu, uh, whichever one you use as your own shofar. It is time for us to begin to blow the shofars in the next two minutes. We'll start blowing the shofars. And it will be proclaiming liberty, be proclaiming recovery, be proclaiming restoration, be proclaiming reset, will be proclaiming reestablishment, will be proclaiming uh, uh, reaffirmation and reconfirmation and, and all the other things that are supposed to go with the 12 re's that I talk about in you know the book that God in his own mercy had mercy on me to be the channel through which it was spent down enter your jubilee because i talk about 12 different you know classes of re's uh, reactivation re you know all of that including uh, uh, restoration that i've already talked about now so let every part of the re's that should be experienced by you be released right now including restitution in the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare recovery and restoration. We declare recovery and reestablishment. We declare recovery and reset. We declare recovery and uh, relaunch so that you are relaunched into what God wanted you to be. You will be in orbit. You will not miss your tangent anymore. You will not end up going off because at the end of the day, when you end up with vectors, you understand what we're talking about. Then you go off just a little. By the time you've covered such a great distance, you will realize you are far off the target because you didn't maintain your course. Today, I declare you are relaunched on course as the arrow of God and you will land on target. According to God's original plan and purpose, you will land on target. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, O God, let your enemies be scattered out of these lives. Arise, O God, let your force flee before you as smoke that is driven before the wind, so blow them away as wax that melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God who was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, has now committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. For God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, and has now committed to us the word of reconciliation. For we are ambassadors of Christ Jesus, and we beseech you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. So now is the time for us to blow the trumpets. We're entering that gate of time right now. And the good news for those of you that are in GMT, for example, is that 3 p.m. was the hour of prayer that, you know, was the turn of event, change of history. I mean, I deal with that in the gates of time, the book on the gates of time, you know, possessing the gates of time, praying through the gates of time. So blow the trumpets right now. Blow them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Blow your... Realignment of identities with his own blueprint. Now it is important for you to say whatever has stolen my identity in the realm of the spirit, whatever identity theft had taken place in the realm of the soul, whichever identity theft had taken place in the physical, not only for me as an in, as an individual, but also for my family, also for our you know, lineage, our ancestry, our clan, our tribe, our community, our city, our nation, our continent. Let that identity theft be reversed right now. We declare reset right now. By the reset button that has been pressed by God himself, we declare right now restoration of the original identity that God meant for us in the name of the Lord Jesus. We go back to our original identity. We declare your identity realigned with the original that God saw of you. Who, who were you that God saw? Who was I that God saw? From today, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, that is restored right now. That identity is restored right now. 
That identity for your nation is restored. That identity for your family is restored. That identity for your city is restored. That identity for your community is restored. That identity for your nation is restored. That identity for your continent is restored. That identity for your place of work, your, your uh, area of operation, your gate of operation. All these identities are restored right now, according to God's original plan and purpose. We decree that established right now. And we thank you, Lord God Almighty, because we know you have heard, you've done it to your glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we blow the trumpets again, Lord, let it be that we're blowing the trumpet in Zion. We're sounding the alarm on your holy mountain. And we're saying that the jubilee of God has come into every area of operation in the name of the Lord Jesus, that we're proclaiming freedom, we're proclaiming liberty, we're proclaiming recovery, we're proclaiming restoration, we're proclaiming restitution, we're proclaiming uh, uh, realignment, we're proclaiming uh, reconstruction, reconstitution, uh, reconfiguration, we're proclaiming all kinds of things that are actually beginning to happen, that every man, every woman would have that total, you know, transformation taking place. Father, where there were all kinds of things the enemy had against us that we had even fallen and had mistakenly done one way or the other. Because you say, even the law for captives shall be delivered. Let this reset button be the opportunity for our deliverance. There are some people that have been, you know, struggling with besetting sins, you know, things that let me tell you something. There are things that God has told me personally to do before. And when I went beyond either the time, the context, you know, the, for lack of a better word also, you know, duration. Now, not only in terms of timing, but the duration, time frame within which it should have been finished. I ended up in trouble. Not because it wasn't God who told me. God might have told you to do something, and there is nothing sinful about it. But when you go beyond what God told you to do, in terms of context, in terms of timing, in terms of time frame, in terms of, you know, all the other scenarios, then you might be standing in danger of sin. Now, during this reset today, one of the things God told me is that he is going to give us a new lease. So that it will be as though you had ne never seen again uh, before, uh, as though nothing had ever gone wrong in your life. So as we proclaim with these, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, proclamations of, you know, the jubilee uh, with the uh, uh, jubilee horns, because your bell, you know, is supposed to be the blast of the horn, the blast of the ram's horn, you know, that is uh, your bell hakeram. You know, Karen is actually supposed to be dealing with horn. You know, Karen Hapok, horn of, you know, beautification. So, you know, Karen, uh, Yom, uh, I mean, excuse, excuse me. Yom HaKaren is supposed to be the day of, you know, that horn being released. And then the teruah that is supposed to be coming from that horn. So let's go ahead and blow that with that understanding that there is a reset. And let me make things easy for you. If you don't understand, it's not how much I shout or jump or scream or do whatever. It is the fact that it is in obedience to God. He told me yesterday about this time, you know, 3 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. that this day was to be used as a time for a reset button for nations and individuals. Nations and individuals. We know families make up nations. Individual make, uh, individuals make up families. So that's why I said all the works. So let's blow it with that understanding that it is a spiritual exercise and things have changed. That's why for the people from Egypt hearing about, you know, Gideon's army, you know, a sword for the, the Lord and for Gideon, and they're doing that, you know, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, also prophetic act now of doing 300, you know, let it be. Each person just go ahead and do it. Let it be that by the time you finish, it will be evident. So 
go ahead and proclaim that with your your bell now. Proclaim that with the ram's heart. Every one of you. <laughs> Continue to thank God when we close this meeting, which we should be closing within the next four or five minutes. But what I want you to understand is that we've entered a very, 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 very special period. Between now and the next 70 days, you're going to see so much of changes around the world, literally between now and the next 70 days. A lot of changes for the best, for the body of Christ, but it might be for the worst, for the kingdom of darkness. That's one. Secondly, there is also the aspect of, you know, peculiar things happening around the world. Science in the heavens, science in the waters, science on the land, science in the vegetation. Let me take that again. Science in the heavens, science in the waters, science on the land, science in the vegetation. You're going to see quite a bit of that within the next 70 days. But it's all because of the wave of transformation that God is bringing on the earth. Now, we also do know that 9th and 10th are very special you know, dates for October. I do not want to go into details on that. You go and do your search and you will see the various things that are going to happen. Then, you know, by the time you get to towards the end of October, there are other things that will be happening that are very important. Now, some of you know about the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and all the other issues. I don't want to 
go into all the details of that. But I want you to understand that there are things that would happen that would change the narrative for the world. In fact, God is changing the constitution of leadership, constitution of leadership, and constitution of those who dictate the direction the world must go. Leadership and those who dictate the direction the world must go. So position yourself strategically as you allow God to position you. By reason of this reset today, just keep in step with his spirit. There are things that you need to go and sort out with any man, any woman, please go and sort it out. If there are things even you had become like a planting of the enemy in another person's life, go and just resolve it because this is the season. In fact, we have the next 21 days to resolve all the issues after which you might not have it as easy as it's supposed to be in this window. That's all I can say to you. That's why I said I still had, you know, four to five minutes so I can share the things that I received from the Lord so that then now I can declare that let that reset that has taken place bring so much joy to the Lord himself and to his kingdom because of your life and the gains that have been made all over because of God operating in and through your life. Now from today, you become one of the best that the world has ever seen and experienced in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare from today, I have become one of the best that God has, you know, got to express himself, his nature, character, and function. You know, I see some of you, like Sister Margaret, being taken to another level of influence, not only as it pertains to Israel, but as it pertains to the continent of Africa and two other continents that maybe we can talk about later. There are others that I don't have the time to go into. Jörg, you know, there is a shift that is taking place right now. Uh, that I don't want to, you know, I want you to know that there are so many things that have happened. You know, the two Johns right now, things are changing. Victor, things are changing. You know, uh, I don't know how you pronounce your name, whether it's Chindo or, you know, from, I believe from South Africa or East Africa. But I declare right now, as I am seeing that God is actually shifting some things that had to do with the influence that you're supposed to have been exerting and exercising that seem to have been eroded, that there is a restoration coming right now. Let that restoration bring about restoration for the nations in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, I'm just using examples. You know, every one of you, God is actually taking you to a new level of expression. That's why he's showing me some things with just samples that others have seen. That God is taken to places where they will become the spokespersons for their families. Before now, the family despised you, but now you've been brought to a place of high esteem. All this because of the reset. Now, I'm sure that if we were to spend more time, I could go step by step and show you things. There are certain apostles that are currently on, you know, this call right now. God is changing their, their you know, for lack of a better word, identity and definition. Identity and definition. That's what I saw and I heard. Identity, definition, identity, definition. That means you're being redefined. You're being re-identified, recalibrated. Yes, that was the word I was looking for that God told me. Uh, there is a recalibration of nations. That's the reason why there will be reconstitution of leadership, you know, structure and all of that. And influence structure, impact structure. Yes, those are the specific things I was looking for. They finally come through. Now, thank you, Lord, because I know it's settled according to your original plan and purpose. So I declare as God has redefined you, God has uh, restored you, God has reconfigured you, God has reconstituted you, so shall it be. Go ahead with this recalibration to begin to exercise your God-given grace, anointing, influence, impact, and that ability to exercise dominion. In the name that's above all names, Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory and of grace, amen. 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 Amen.